Hi, my name is Stephen Chase Buchanan. Over the past year, I built this device with Professor Robert Geller from the UCSB Physics Department in order to show thin film reflection. When we began, Professor Geller and I knew we wanted to create some kind of project that blended unique aspects of physics. He came up with the idea to use thin films and project the colors onto a surface. Not wanting to make this task too easy, we decided to add music and have color patterns changing to the beat of the song. Our project can be broken down into three goals. First, display the colors created by a thin film onto any surface, preferably white. Second, refresh the soap film with minimal loss of image in order to keep the colors on the wall for as long as possible. And thirdly, play the music and see changing patterns in the colors by disturbing the soap film. The first step was getting the color to display, but before I could get into that, it's more important to understand what makes the color on the soap film. It's the thickness of the film that determines the colors you see at a given spot on the film, and it is due to reflective light. Before our project, a flashlight served as the light source. When the flashlight shines on the film, one ray of light reflects from the, sur from the front surface while most of the light passes right through. A second ray reflects on the back of the surface towards the front. These two rays can constructively or destructively interfere depending on the thickness of the film. Where you see red, the thickness gives constructive interference for red, while other colors have degrees of destructive interference. The same reasons apply to the other colors, and there's even more physics to explain the very white and dark regions you see. So back to the soap film. We discovered that the color of the liquid soap didn't matter, but its properties do, like, like its thickness. One obstacle we faced was the soap film would eventually get too thin and not reflect anything, so we had to cut back on the reload time of the thin film. For weeks we experimented with the best way to refresh the bubble, and this could easily have been the hardest hurdle to overcome. Ultimately, we decided to cut patterns into a masonite wheel that we created and attach it to a motor that would slowly spin the wheel through a pool of soap. Finding the motor was a whole new challenge because it needed extremely geared because it needed to be extremely geared down and preferably would be a cheap motor. One day I was taking apart an old camera and I found the motor that controlled the zoom of the camera was a perfect fit for this project. After a long process of trial and error, we successfully engineered a way to refresh the soap film. The next thing we did was project the reflected image through a magnifying lens onto a screen. Right now the movement you see is just caused by air current. The last task was adding sound. I purchased a boombox and everything seemed to to set up easily until we hit a little problem. We expected the airflow from the subwoofer to blow on the thin film and alter its thickness so we could show the color and patterns to the beat of the music. But for some reason no air was coming out of the sm small diameter tube we attached to the subwoofer. It turns out we were trying to funnel the air too rapidly and it caused turbulence with the cone, resulting in back pressure. We began looking for ways to get the air funneled from the subwoofer without causing this back pressure. After numerous methods, we found that a dryer exhaust tube was a perfect fix for this problem. Once completed, Professor Geller gave me the opportunity to present this project to his UCSB physics class during his lecture on thin films. The patterns you see here are changing to the song Light Patterns by Bonobo.